I'm gonna be honest, that quality is terrible. Great, I can't even auto-tune. And it's clogged again. Okay, this looks promising. Why is it closing machine? Why is it skipping? The machine is finally fixed. Maybe more than just that. After around three months with this machine, I believe I've successfully brought it back from the dead and turned it into an incredibly capable piece of equipment. Now let's go over this episode's upgrades and then do a recap of the entire project so far. After a quick segment from this video's sponsor, PCBWay. Whether it's PCB fabrication, 3D printing or CNC machining, PCBWay has you covered. Bringing your next project to life has never been easier. Simply upload your chosen files to their site and select the exact way you want your part produced. For 3D printing, you have the option to get your part made with FDM, SLA and even SLM technology, meaning you can get your parts made out of resin, polycarbonate, aluminum or even titanium. I don't think your Ender 3 can do that. No matter the quantity required, whether it's one or a thousand parts, check out PCBWay for your next project in the description below. And thank you PCBWay for kindly sponsoring this video. Getting straight into it, I installed the recently arrived PI Flex Plate. Since then, I've had perfect bed adhesion every single print and it's actually amazing. Speaking of amazing, the bimetal heat break finally arrived as well. It's mostly made out of copper with what I believe to be a steel or titanium insert for decreased thermal transfer. Since installing it, I've had no hotting clogs at all and I believe it has had a positive impact on my machine. It's no slice engineering product, but for $10, I really can't complain. I've also been using the CHT clone nozzle since installing it with absolutely no issues. So I've spent the last 30 minutes trying to get the heat break out of that thing. It just would not budge. So I'm probably going to spend the next 30 trying to install the new one, but uh, at least we're getting there. The extruder I ordered also arrived. It's a mellow dual gear beam and G-clone extruder, which costs half as much as the machine itself, but the build quality is really good and is reflected in the print quality. Since the broken machine at the time of filming is still not printing accurately enough, and with it also being clogged, meant that I needed to print the new electronics enclosure on my Ender 3, which finally got a part cooling upgrade after over two years. The enclosure looked good, and I added some heat set inserts so that I can use screws from the bottom to close it. I then designed a bracket that could mount all the necessary hotting components easily in one place. This did take 7 iterations, and the latest one works well enough. I really didn't like the BL touch mount I had designed though, and it felt really unrefined, so I designed what I call a skeleton mount, utilising only the necessary mounting points and no extra plastic weight used on an appearance, although the difference is essentially nothing. After adding the heat set inserts to the bracket, it was now time to mount all the electronics to the base plate. I also decided to remove the Z limit switch, which was overridden by the use of a BL touch, so it was completely unnecessary. I then soldered a connector onto the electronics fan, which will provide more than enough cooling for the electronics. Next, I took a voltage step down circuit and wired it to the power supply. This takes 12 volts and outputs 5 volts in a USB port. Perfect for the Raspberry Pi and no second power brick needed or in sight. It was now time to uninstall the old tool head and install a new one.
Assembly went well and was pretty straightforward. I also switched back to the Nema 17 pancake stepper motor as I don't need the full sized one since I've got the 3 to 1 gear ratio now. So the E steps are going to be, need to be completely recalibrated. I mean, this is a 3 to 1 gear ratio extruder, unlike the uh, 1 to 1 that we had before. I now began the tedious process of calibrating the rotational distance of the machine, which is the amount of distance that the axis moves with one full revolution of the stepper motor. This was to ensure I would get dimensionally accurate prints, as otherwise the machine wouldn't feel as reliable or as useful. This only took an hour luckily, and I also had some fun testing the print speed on some calibration cubes. The print quality also stood out to me, as the layer lines were really uniform. Once I had printed a handful of cubes, I went on to print a benchy with no adjustments in size to the slicer, to see if the accuracy was improved. It certainly had, and so had the quality. I had a sub 20 minute and sub 30 minute Benchy print with really pleasing quality and time, much faster than any of my previous machines. I also redesigned the fan duct and did a water test, which performed quite well despite the duct not being designed that well even after a revision. Finally, it was time to add the heated bed insulation. I wasn't looking forward to this because I knew I would have to take off the heated bed, but it ended up not being that bad. Finally, after spending more than the entire machine's cost in upgrades alone, and tens of hours of time, I now get insanely good print quality and speed, while also having the satisfaction of bringing a broken printer back into use. I could have left the machine stock once I got it working, but upgrading 3D printers is something I really enjoy doing, so this machine will remain as my test machine for the seeable future, as Clipper makes config changes really easy, and I'm really familiar with the hardware now. I still plan on making future videos with this machine, as I enjoy doing them and you guys enjoy watching them. If you're a company who makes upgrades and would like to partner with me, then please reach out. So once again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.